and welcome back. Since I'm not only a professional musician, but a diehard Green Bay Packers fan, I wanted to take this opportunity to break down one of the plays from the Packers' most recent victory over the Minnesota Vikings. So let's take a look and get started. We've got Rodgers lined up under center with A.J. Dillon in the backfield in the I formation, and he hands it off. And from the two-yard line, AJ's in for the touchdown. Fireworks, touchdown! Let's go! Fireworks! We have fireworks! AJ Dillon! Touchdown! Now, that's all great, but what I really wanted to look at here is coming up next. So we've got AJ Dillon with the ball, and he's conducting an orchestra full of the Packers offense. All right, so let's break this down a little bit. First of all, I want to point out AJ's form with this conducting. I myself went to college for music and had to take an entry-level conducting course. And what I can say is he's actually pretty convincing. I'm not 100% sure what time signature he's in, but if he's shooting for 2-4, he nailed it. Also, major shout out, like every good conductor, he gives a nice, clean prep beat so that everyone enters at the same time. So kudos to AJ. Let's uh, stick with the running back room here and take a look at AJ's counterpart in crime, Mr. Aaron Jones. Uh, he seems to be playing either the violin or viola. And even though I'm no strings expert, I did pass my string techniques course, so I know a, a little thing or two about the violin. And uh, the form's good, but I will say the angle of his violin is uh, probably a little too low to be successful long term so maybe that's something we can figure out soon before you create a bad habit because that would be the worst thing that you could do all right next let's move on to uh tight end tyler davis here and he's playing the guitar and as you can see he's got decent form everything seems to be in the right position good technique my only advice to him would be you've got to get those eyes off your fretboard and I know that it can be hard worrying about all those frets and being placed at the right spot, but if you get a general routine of practicing scales and warm-ups and exercises, maybe on a daily or bi-daily occurrence, you won't be looking at that fretboard for very long. All right, let's move on to the GOAT himself, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Seems to be playing a pretty mean bass guitar. He's in the power stance on one knee. He's got the uh, right hand moving correctly with the two fingers plucking. But I am a little worried because I know you want to hold your bass up high like Sting or Paul McCartney or something, but if you hold it that high for too long, that is going to wear and tear on your shoulders, and we know you've had some issues with your shoulders over the years, so something we should watch out for and address quickly before we get too far. Maybe one of the most unsung heroes of the group, David Bakhtiari here, doesn't get enough shine for this one but you can barely just see him over here in the corner. He is rocking that saxophone. He reminds me very much of another great saxophone player with long locks of brown hair, Mr. Kenny G. So kudos to David Bakhtiari for full character, not only instrument, but also with the hair. All right, a couple more here. Let's move on to one of my favorite players, Mr. Elton Jenkins. Congratulations on your new contract. Upon first glance, I thought maybe he was just dancing and, you know, one of the woo girls in the crowd jumping up on stage. But after a second look, I actually think he might be playing a uh, marching bass drum. So credit given where credit due, holding the band together from the bass. I uh, love the movements, and although that might hinder your ability to strike the center of the head and get the best sound, I'll live with it. And finally, let's move on to the last member of this ensemble we're gonna talk about today, and that would be Mr. Josh Myers on the triangle. I love his commitment, focus, and intensity to the instrument. And while most people probably see the triangle as a small kind of throwaway part of the orchestra, it is an extremely important sound for whichever composer decided to incorporate it into this piece. What I will say is, you need to understand your role. Sometimes you're not the melody. You're not the featured part of the ensemble. And it appears to me as though Josh considers this whole tune to be about him. I would just say maybe back off and focus a little more on your tone and less about projection and volume, and you'll fit right in. All right, so in review, I think this ensemble has some serious potential. We've got a future Dudamel here with AJ Dillon conducting, and the rest of the offense is just humming and 
I can't wait to hear more from this group going forward and hopefully a deep run into the playoffs. So go Pack Go, carry the G, and until next time, thanks.